Colombia's geography has turned it into one of the most biodiverse in the world. The only country more biodiverse is Brazil, but Brazil is approximately seven times larger. About 10% of the species on Earth live in Colombia, an area of about 0.8% of the world's emerged lands. But Colombia also has the largest number of endemisms, which are species that are not found naturally anywhere else. This includes 1,900 species of bird, the highest of any country in the world, and is approximately 18% of the world's total. This is more species of bird than in Europe and North America combined. Sources vary slightly, but generally, Colombia is also ranked first in orchids, second in freshwater fish, plants, amphibians, and butterflies. It's third in reptiles and sixth in mammals. Colombia's geography is what makes this possible. But before I dive into its extreme geography, today's video is sponsored by Indel. Indel is an app that provides soundscapes for focus, relaxation, and sleep. If you have a hard time focusing for long periods of time or getting started on a task, Indel could be for you. The app generates personalized soundscapes using patented neuroscience AI technology. It reacts to the time of the day, weather, and even your heart rate if you have a smartwatch to pair the app with. Indel has been useful for making my videos. Editing isn't my favorite part of the process, and it's easy for me to lose focus and start daydreaming about what I'm going to research for future videos, which causes me to work at a slower pace. But Indel helps combat that. It's easy to use, so I'm not wasting time. It only takes a few clicks to start the sounds, and I can begin working. If you think Indel may be for you, hurry and download the app now. Because the first 100 people to download Indel using the link in the description below will get a free week of audio experiences. Colombia's geography is extremely diverse. Just take a look at this climate map. There are 13 different climates ranging from tundras to hot deserts. 13 climates are pretty high, especially for a country of this size, but it's far from the most diverse in the world but similar climates are isolated from one another. Take a look at the tropical rainforest, well known for its biodiversity. The Andes Mountains have separated it into multiple disconnected zones, or this pocket here of subtropical highlands and tundra. This separation facilitated the development of different species. The mountains have essentially divided Colombia into six very distinct geographic regions. This is the Andean region, named for, of course, the Andes Mountains. The climate and vegetation of the region vary depending on the elevation. This region is home to both low-lying valleys and mountains up to 5,500 meters in elevation. While the majority of most countries' human populations sit along coasts and lower elevations, this mountainous region is home to the majority of people in Colombia, and it contains the majority of the country's urban centers. A few interesting features of this region are the Tatacoa Desert, which actually isn't a desert, but a tropical dry forest. The wildlife here includes turtles, rodents, snakes, scorpions, and wildcats. And there are also cacti reaching between four and five meters high. The wax palms of Kakora Valley. These palms that look like they're straight out of a Dr. Seuss book are the tallest palm trees in the world, growing up to 200 feet tall. And Sumapaz Petamo, the world's largest alpine tundra ecosystem. This area is also home to South America's only native species of bear. Due to having so many different climates within the Andes region, this is Colombia's most biodiverse. Next is the Amazon region, which of course is covered in tropical rainforest. This region has the most amount of fish species due to the numerous rivers and streams. You may recognize some of the fish native to the area if you are in the aquarium fish hobby. The red belly piranha, the cardinal tetra, the rummy nose tetra, and the talking catfish, just to name a few out of the hundreds of species. And new species are still being discovered. This region is home to Caño Cristales, a river that for a brief period every year becomes what some call the river that ran away from paradise. During the short span between the wet and dry seasons, when the water level is just right, a unique species of plant that lines the river floor turns red. Our next region is Orinoquia, the major ecosystems of this region are tropical savanna with forest and wetlands along the rivers. This region is home to one of the most endangered species of crocodile, the Orinoco crocodile. It's unclear how many individuals remain in the wild, but estimates range between 250 and 1500. 
A notable feature of the region is the Maipures Rapids. It was called the eighth wonder of the world by a German explorer in the 19th century. The rapids are located within El Tuparo National Park. The park covers 548,000 hectares and along with the savanna has five types of riparian forests. The park alone is home to 320 species of birds, 17 reptiles, 27 fish, and 74 mammal species, to include the jaguar. Our next region is the Caribbean. This region's climate is extremely diverse. Humid forests, dry forests, savannas, wetlands, desert, and even tundra is present. Most of this region is relatively flat, but rising from the plains are the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. These snow-capped peaks are home to the tallest mountains in Colombia. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, its separation from the Andes as an isolated area has resulted in high biodiversity and endemism. The Caribbean region also contains the largest swampy marsh in Colombia, which covers 45,000 hectares. Unsurprisingly, this is home to hundreds of plant and animal species. One is called the Boca Chico, a fish native only to Colombia. But overfishing in previous decades and hydroelectric works have pushed the fish to near extinction. South of the Caribbean region is the Pacific or Choco region. This area is mostly flat and covered by dense rainforest, rivers, swamps, and mangroves. This region is home to what is called the Darien Gap. This gap, shared with Panama, is referring to a 66 mile wide break in the Pan American Highway. This highway stretches nearly 30,000 miles from the northern shore of Alaska to the southernmost tip of South America, but the thick forest and marshland in the region has prevented the road from connecting. Within the gap is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Los Catillos National Natural Park. This is due to its abundance of rare plants and wildlife. The park is home to at least 450 species of bird. This is over 25% of bird species reported in Colombia, even though it makes up less than 1% of Colombia's territory. Due to the park's geographical location in northern Colombia, on the southern edge of the Central American land bridge, this area served as a filter for the exchange of animal species between North and South America in the tertiary and Pleistocene periods. This process continues today, making Los Catillos the only region in South America where many Central American species are common, such as the giant anteater and the Central American taper. Our last region is the Insular region. This region is made up of islands outside of the continental territory and in both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. As you'd expect, these islands hold important marine ecosystems that are home to a large amount of coral and aquatic species, as well as species on land that are unique to each island. Let's take a look at one of these islands. This is Gorgona Island. Like other islands in the region, it has been isolated from the mainland for thousands of years, facilitating the development of unique species. One of these is the Blue Anole, which is the only all-blue anole lizard in the world. Gorgana is also famous for its snakes. There are three known venomous snakes, including the much-feared Terciopelo. Just off the island's coast, you can spot hammerhead sharks, white tip reef sharks, whale sharks, sea turtles, and moray eels. The island is also well known for the yearly passage of the humpback whale. Colombia's biodiversity isn't as well known as it should be. I can't speak for other countries, but in the US, Colombia is better known for a few negative stereotypes. There is a bit of truth to these, but Colombia's problems are improving. Its murder rate is a third of what it was in the early 90s, and kidnappings have fallen 92% since the year 2000. I'm confident that one day, Colombia will be better known for its nature than its troubled past, and that Colombia will protect this natural resource while leveraging it for the economic benefit of its citizens. As the former Colombian president Juan Manuel Santos said, biodiversity is to Colombia what oil is for the Arabs. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more geography videos. Thank you to all my Patreon patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel, and thank you all for watching.